All right, so if we need down, all we need is a copy of up. Again, you could probably combine these, but I want to keep them separated for this. So I'm going to duplicate that, and I'm going to rename it elevator down. Okay. And what will happen there is all I do is take and add that to the trigger. Which is now gone. Hmm. Oh, yeah. Boy, brain fart, right? There we go. All right, so here we go. Elevator down. And now what's, the, what's going on here? Now the trigger's really hard to get to. See if I click on the trigger. Okay, good. It's, it's not being hard. Oh, it's the elevator that I had to get. The elevator's hard to get to. So what's going to happen is I'm going to have to take and unparent them just so I can get elevator. And I can also put first person controller out there. I can reparent the trigger to the elevator now. And what am I looking at? Well, I'm looking at two. So two is equal to 3.08. 8. Okay. So two and Y. Also, this trigger up here, what changes? Well, that's very simple. Uh, I put the same up-down script on it, but instead of a 1, I put a 2. Now, how would another person know that? I would probably have to put some comment in the code that says, uh, separate triggers out by numbers, 1 through a million, or something like that. You know, just something really wacky. I'd have to I'd have to put some comments in there that way the player knows or the people that actually run this would know how to use my scripts. Okay, and if you look elevator down, what's going to happen that's different in elevator down? Well, the only main difference here is the number at which it's casting. So this time it's looking for the absolute value of 2. It's also doing a different checksum. It's looking for greater than 2. Okay. The rest pretty much stays the same except for, oh, yep, a negative vector 3. So that way it transverse down. So now you can see... Uh, it's checking the bool switch for two, and now it's also going to check to see if it's greater than two y. That way it stops at a certain point. Okay, let's try this code out. Okay, we will walk forward. Do do do. Stops at the top, which is really okay. There we go. Okay, what didn't I do? I forget the I forgot to make this top one a trigger. Also, this is really hard to understand. So let's go in here and create uh, some three D text. We'll put this over here. First floor. I'll duplicate that up. Now, okay, called second floor. There we go. Hey, that didn't copy. All right. Try that again. Sweet. All right. Save it out. Play it. So now it says first floor, just to get my head wrapped around it. There's second floor. All right. Now it says something about 
setting the parent of transform resides with the prefab disabled data corruption. So let's look what that is. Uh, first person controller. Oh, it's this first person controller. There we go. Let's try that out. Going up. Getting off the elevator. And you can see this right here. This is what's moving. Watch as I move forward and hit the other trigger. First person controller goes along for the ride. And as soon as I get off the elevator, it becomes unparented. And that's how it works. If you do not do that, what will happen is you will fall right through the elevator. Physics will not work. Rigid bodies will not work. If you do it incorrectly, it could lead to the character being stretched, pulled, or even exploded. So uh, keep in mind how you parent an item is very, very delicate within the Unity game engine. Uh, pretend, for example, if this is moving down and it's fighting some unseen force, it will, it will do funny things like that. So at the end, you can turn these off. You don't need them anymore. You can just turn their mesh renders off. So you get something that looks more like this. Da da da. Getting on the elevator. And then getting up off the elevator. Very cool. You could do this all day because it's just that much fun. All right. Now we got most of the, the scripting stuff. Uh, let's move on to the next project.